Oh, I saw Mauvais Sang at the Alliance Française, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't actually remember that it got a regular theatrical release here. It did it was a film of extraordinary precocity, and at the same time, a film of great youth, a film about what it's like to be a young man in a world filled with elders whom he admired profoundly and who were nonetheless threatening to crush him. Me seeing it in France when it came out, I was kind of really young, but it was also like this this movie you waited for. It's like going to a big rock and roll concert <laughs> of you know your favorites and the Rolling Stones and what them. You're just waiting for that very precious, strong bomb of energy of youth that you know is very lyrical. Also, in a way that I hadn't seen in movies in the longest time. Mm -hmm. I mean, his way of using actors to me is something I've, I never really watched this way on screen because everything is precious, every step of it. And it's like, a, you know, when you watch a Hitchcock to me, I can see them a million times and I know them by heart. It always feels so good and it always feels like the one film I want to see if I'm not well or something. They also, in a way, it's like every step of the way, even though they're not as easy film to watch and take in, it's just they feel like there's a mystery of perfection in, in the way that's really his world. That is very French also. <laughs> well, I think that's exactly right, that there's a strange combination of looseness, of exuberance, and of precision. So, especially coming when it did, there was a kind of retro moment in French cinema where some critics were talking about the rediscovery of the screenplay. Um, some filmmakers were making films that seemed to have been influenced by TV commercials, mm -hmm. where there were very pretty, rather eye-catching, but fairly empty pictures that were supposed to represent the sort of regeneration of the French cinema after whatever decadence it fell into in the intellectualism of the new wave. Not that I believe that was the case. But I, I remember that that was what I was reading a lot in, in, in criticism at the time. And it was as if Mauvais Sang was a response to that. Mm -hmm. Images that were not empty, images that were simultaneously exquisite and deeply personal. That the, the, the intimacy of Carax's films is something that struck me from the very beginning. That even though he had the command of a huge crew and a massive battery of equipment. And he, it's, a, it's a very large scale film. Yeah. And at the same time, it feels handmade. It yeah. feels as if he, when he's filming a parachute, it's as if he had his hands on the parachute. Very simply, my first feeling was great tenderness and gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, I missed Leos Carax when his films were away. I felt as if someone dear to me had been absent for far too long. And at the beginning of the film, seeing him, it was, I wouldn't dare call him a friend, I'd certainly never met him, but a part of my life was coming back. Um, mm -hmm. His films were so important to me. And you know, the world of cinema was poorer when he wasn't making films. And it was as if, you know, since cinema is such a big part of my life as it is of yours. Um, it was as if a big part of my life was, was, was returning to me. And seeing him in the very first scene of the yeah. film made that impression all the stronger. Yeah. You know, you put it better than I could put it in words <laughs> because I was waiting for the film to come out so much. That excitement of waiting and knowing it was coming was a huge, like, body experience. I was just like, <gasps> and then of course when I saw it, I felt, I cried at the end. I felt really, really moved also because you know his personal story and then you see him at the beginning, you see his daughter in the ship going and his dog. Like, I always feel these films are really his. Like there's one universe and you can't mm -hmm. forget it or mix it with anything else. It has such a specific place that's between commercial and handmade and and then belongs to many type of time, also because it's a true diary of images and dreams. Also, I think so many have so much fantasy 
in a really strange like a David Lynch of France for me. There's something <laughs> about his world that's just really dark in a way that I love. Because with David Lynch, the one thing you never really know is where is David Lynch? Where does David yeah, Lynch stand? Sure. Whereas in a film by Lewis Cahax, you know where he stands. You know that what you're seeing is something very close to his heart. It isn't just satirical. It isn't just a wild fantasy. It's something very close to his life. I don't mean that the events are close to his yeah. life, but that everything happening in the movie is something that he cares deeply about. You know, like the one that I felt for me really, really, like, did something physically to me that was so strong was the Lovers on the Bridge. Mm -hmm. And just the, the intensity of the body of Denis Lavon and the intensity of the love story, like, mm -hmm. as a young person when I saw it, was something I so wanted to live and believed in and felt for and became close to and it just blew me in a very intense way that I couldn't stop watching it. You know, a filmmaker wants to become international. The filmmaker has to have a, an element of universality in his or her work. You can be a, an extremely local filmmaker like Abbas Kiarostami, for instance, but even when you're filming locally, there's a kind of guiding idea, kind of world that you have in your head that's so much larger than the specific events being filmed. You know, there are very good filmmakers in France, but many, without naming names, film their story, and they film their story very well. But they're not filming more than their story. The story is the end point, it's not the beginning of the film. Whereas with Carax from the very, very beginning, I mean, from, from Boy Meets Girl, from this small scale black and white film by a 23-year-old about a young man whose circumstances were not drastically different, apparently, from those of the filmmaker. Nonetheless, his intimate scenes resonated with the world around him. They resonated with history. They resonated with the history of cinema. He felt his life and his story in the widest possible terms. I'm really excited that it pushes people to see them because of how the mothers that came out it was the good timing. But I hear, you know, when you go to the bathroom, it's the best place to hear the <laughs> critic, always. <laughs> and I said, some people, they're so depressed and they're, they're so fashionable, but I don't really understand their, their, um, their angst and battle for life. And I'm there standing, like, you know, capturing all their fears and then some others, but you don't understand. A mix of really, strong feelings, but they speak for hours about it, so I also feel it really does something to them deeply because whatever age or whatever social background, they all speak about it for hours after all in the street as I'm walking out, so that's kind of something that's really beautiful that not many films can 